Hello there, fellow filmmaker, visionary, videographer, editor, or anybody in the creative field. My name is Chris Kelly, and I'm here to teach you how to end a looping track inside of Premiere. I myself recently ran into this issue when I was creating this promotional video for these new motion graphic line transitions, but I am not here to talk about those. I am here to teach you some valuable information. So the track that I am using is the Looping Groove track, which you can find on Soundscrate. It is in the Dance and Groove section. I'm going to play this song out so you can give it a listen. I know I want to cut to somewhere near the end where we start seeing the logo. So you hear and see if you can identify where you would cut, and then I'll tell you whether I think you're right or not. Whenever I'm listening to a track that I know I want to edit, I like to tap my foot or tap my finger along to the beat. Find that it helps a lot. All right, did you hear it? I'm gonna play it again from the middle right here and let's zoom in. Right there. That's the beat that I wanna cut on. I'm gonna go ahead and trim the end point in a little bit and I'm gonna right click up here and just add a marker so I can always locate that beat. I believe there's an additional beat in here that I wanna cut out. Yep, so let's trim that a little bit further in. Now what I wanna do is hit my C tool to bring up my razor and let's zoom in a bit further. And I wanna find where that drum beat is. You hear that pop? So that's the drum beat. And then it kind of holds for a little bit. And then we have this note. Now this is the note that I want to hold on. So I'm going to just razor cut right there. Then what I want to do is I'm going to hit V to bring back my selection tool. I will select this last note that we created, right click it, find my speed and duration. And what I want to do is just select the maintain audio pitch and hit OK. The next thing I want to do is hit R, which brings up my change rate tool, and I can extend this note out pretty far. And let's play this track from a little further back, and let's see if it sounds like it is ending with some finality. So that is actually pretty close to what I'm hoping for. It does sound like there's some weird cymbal sound in there. I'm going to go ahead and just extend this track out a little bit further because maybe there's some information in here that we'll actually want to use. So it does sound like this note here is the note that we want to end on and then there's some weird cymbal sound and then the note comes back and holds for a bit longer. I want to use the section that holds for a bit longer which is not the first section. So I just want to find the right place to cut, which should be after that cymbal sound effect. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm going to play it again and just listen and hear what sounds a little bit off. So you hear that ch from the cymbal and then obviously this weird portion at the end, which I'm just going to trim out. I just want to cut right after that ch right there. I want to just drag this point in and now I have my note, and let's drag this note right after that final drum beat, and let's play from right here. Cool, sounds pretty good. We do have a weird little whoosh at the end, but now it does sound like the song is actually ending. Now sometimes there is a weird popping sound when you cut two tracks together like this. Now it's really easy to fix with this awesome effect which is called constant power. I use this pretty much every single day. So constant power right there. I just want to drag that onto my cut. And I don't need it to be this long. I just want it to be maybe right around there, right where the cut is, just to smooth things out a little bit. Sounds pretty good. We're still getting some weird whooshing, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. I might be able to extend the rate a bit further, but I do notice that at a certain point you can't continue to extend it. It will just go totally quiet. I think we're probably about at that point. Can push it a little further. Yep, so right there, now suddenly the audio is entirely gone. 
and I'm actually not entirely sure why. I just think we can't max it out further than that. But I think where we were before is pretty good for holding that final note. And let's just trim that out point. Now I actually want this final note to hold a little bit longer, but I can't extend it any further. The way I'm gonna do that is just by duplicating. So I'm gonna hit Control C, Control V, and I'm gonna cut out a little bit of the intro because I think there's a slight sound dip. And now let's just drag this over here. And now I just wanna use my constant power again. Let's drag that right in between the cut and tighten it up here. And let's see if that sounds all right. There's still a weird little whooshing sound, so I think that might actually be coming from this clip. And let's drop the constant power on there again. So that final note holds pretty nicely. I do want it to dip out, but instead of just dipping out the volume, I want to use something called a low pass. What a low pass does is eliminates frequencies above the specified cutoff frequency. And yes, I did just read that from the Adobe website. So I'm gonna just type low and find my low pass effect. And let's drag that onto this new clip here. And you can actually hear what it does. I'm gonna go ahead and play it out. So it sounds kind of muted. Actually, let's just disable the effect here for now. And what I wanna do is find the frequency that it sounds like it's having no effect on the clip. That way I can start there and then dip down to where it's sounding really muted. So let me just show you what I mean. I'm gonna drag this low pass onto my main clip here. So we can hear that sounds really, really muted, right? Now if I change my cutoff frequency higher, now it starts to sound way more normal. So that sounds about right. I just wanna disable the low pass effect. So I hear kind of a ch -ch -ch that's a higher frequency, so maybe I raise that up and re-enable my low pass. So right around there, it doesn't sound like it's having any effect. So I just wanna copy my low pass with this frequency set to where it sounds like it's having no effect. And I just wanna delete it off of this main clip here. And let's find that cut one more time and zoom in. And now I will select this last cut here and let's just delete that low pass I had before. Paste the low pass with this frequency, and what I wanna do is hit the stopwatch for my cutoff, and just navigate all the way to the end of the track here, and now I can just dip my cutoff way down. Maybe right around 600 should be pretty good. So I'm liking how this low pass is working. The next thing I wanna do is fade out the audio as well. So I'm just gonna type in fade and find my exponential fade effect and drag that onto this clip. And I just need it fading a little bit, not too bad. That sounds pretty good to me. You could leave it just like this if you wanted, but I like to customize things a little bit further. I've already imported some cymbal effects. You can find these sound effects on Soundscrate. They are under the instruments category and maybe long one. Let's just give that a listen. It sounds kind of dramatic. Let's go ahead and try cymbal bright. And I'll drop the volume down because I know these are pretty loud. Cool. So let's try dropping this cymbal sound effect right when we hear that drum beat that we cut on. So, you know, that sounds okay. I don't think it works very well for this song, but what I can do is actually reverse the cymbal sound effect and use it as kind of a build to the final note. So if I right click this, I can go to my speed and duration and reverse the speed here. And now I have a reverse cymbal effect, and I want the end here to actually end right where my drum beat begins, which is a little bit before the cut. If I solo this track, I can find that again. Right there. Great, so now my cymbal will reverse and build right up into the drum beat, and then that single note will hold and die out.
Yes, that sounds perfect. That reverse symbol really adds a lot. I can drop a low pass on it if I want. It does sound a little sharp. So let's drop a low pass right on that symbol effect. And I know I want to bring the cutoff a little bit up. Maybe not too high. Let's hear how that sounds. All right, everyone, that does it for this tutorial. Remember to make it awesome.